So your Trezor Model T has arrived and you're excited to set it up? Well, we're excited to show you how. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today, let's take a look at setting up a Trezor Model T. We'll go through the whole process, literally from plugging it in to getting you set up with your coins on your wallet. Let's jump in. Okay, so we literally just got our Trezor, so let's get this thing open. All right, so when we open it up here, Oh, nice. This is actually really nice packaging. So the safe place for your coins. So let's go ahead and take this thing out of here. Okay, so this is embarrassing. I kind of just ripped this thing open to pull it out. And <laughs> it turns out that it has this really nice clean, just like opening thing. So don't do what I did. That's embarrassing. So okay, ready? Take two. All right, so we're going to open it up. And we see here it's sitting nicely right there for us. So let's pull out our treasure. We'll see here that on the box it actually has some getting started steps. So we'll actually go through those together. And then we also have this little box that has our accessories in it. So I'm gonna open that up and it's got our, our USB-C cable and then some other instructions. So this here is where we're going to write down our recovery phrase. We have two copies of it and we're gonna keep them in two different places that no one can get access to but us. There's also some stickers and stuff. So looking at our getting started guide, it says step one, connect the Trezor to the computer or smartphone using the cable. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna take off this little safety seal. And it actually says here, if that seal is missing or damaged to reach out to support, but we have our seal and it's in place, so we're gonna take it off. Not a huge fan of this kind of being left behind. I imagine that's deliberate. So it would leave sort of this broken marking if it was taken off, but it is what it is. All right, so let's get this thing plugged into our computer. Then the next thing is we need to go to treasure.io slash start on step two here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we can either come to the treasure.io website and click on I already own a treasure, or you can go straight to treasure.io slash start. All right, so we're gonna scroll down, choose our device to continue. We have the Model T. Okay, so it's saying before we start to pull off the holographic seal. So we did this together in the previous step, so we're good to go here and we'll continue to wallet. All right, we'll let this load. All right, so we have this plugged in from earlier, and actually here it's also telling us go to treasure.io slash start, so we're good to go there. So we're gonna click here on check for devices. We see here that the treasure was detected. We can select it here and click on connect. One thing that I'll point out is that it was pretty loose and wobbly here when we first got it. I had to actually kind of push it kind of hard, which is unfortunate, right? Because you don't wanna like press it really hard and break it. So if yours is also kind of loose, maybe you need to press a little bit harder. Um, and then we actually heard it click when it got in. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, select it and click on connect. All right, so it's time to install the device's firmware. So keep in mind for these hardware wallets, we have the software in the UI on our computer that we're going to use to manage the different transactions. And then we have the firmware that actually lives on the device that is what handles the private keys, the registration of addresses, and actually the process of the transactions that we're going to do. So first thing we need to do is get that firmware installed. So let's go ahead and install firmware, and we'll let this progress. We also see a progress indicator here. All right, so now that it finished, the device actually told me, hey, I'm gonna restart, and it's going through a restart process right now. And it looks like it is now set up and ready to go. And we see here the instructions said, wait for it to reboot, which it just did. And then we wanna check for devices again. So let's do it again. And there's the Trezor again. So let's hit connect. Okay, great. So now here we have the option to create a new wallet or recover an existing wallet. In the future, we'll do a video on how to recover a wallet with the Trezor, but for today, since we literally just got it, we're gonna create a new wallet. We're gonna go ahead and create the wallet with a single backup. It's gonna give us a sequence of 12 words for our recovery phrase. So let's go ahead and create that single backup. So now on the device, it's going to ask us, do you want to create a new wallet? And we have to click yes or no on here. Remember, there's all a touch screen on here, so I'm gonna click the little checkbox. So that's processing. It says that it still needs the backup, which we're going to do here in a second. So let's go ahead and do that and create the backup. And now that we're doing that, we get some really good warnings here. And so I wanna read through these together because it's really important that we understand this. So the recovery seed is the backup key to all of our cryptocurrencies and applications. 
the recovery seed can only be displayed once. So they're going to show us the 12 words right now. We will never have the opportunity to see these 12 words again. That's why we need to write it down twice on our sheets of paper here, because once the words are presented to us, they will never be presented again. And the only way that we can restore our wallet if anything happens to it is with these sheets of paper. As we showed in the previous screen, if we were to lose or our treasure was to get stolen or broken, we could actually restore an identical treasure. All we would need to do is order a new one. When it comes in, we would take our 12 words. We would put them back into this new treasure in the restore workflow. And when it's done, we would have an identical set of private keys and assigned addresses as we had previously, and everything will continue working exactly like the one that we had before. So it's a really easy process. But on the flip side, because it's so easy to make an identical set of private keys and addresses, it's critically important that we make sure that no one ever gets access to these words other than us. And so because of that, the best practice is always to write this down on a physical piece of paper, have multiple copies of that stored in different locations in case anything were to happen to one of the locations where you have it stored. And so what they tell us here, never make a digital copy of the recovery seed and never upload it online. Keep it in a safe place, right? The whole point of why we're doing this is that we're trying to protect ourselves from like an exchange getting hacked and our keys being stolen. So it really defeats that purpose if we take this recovery phrase and we store it in some Google Doc or Evernote or something like that that's stored in a, in a centralized place. Hard copies are the way to go. So again, things to avoid. Don't take a picture of it. Don't store it on your computer. Don't save it in cloud storage. Never upload it to the internet. So with my overly redundant explanation, I think that we understand that now and we can continue. All right, so now it's asking us to finish the process on the Trezor itself and not to disconnect it. We have a similar warning on the device that's telling us never make a digital copy and never upload it online and asking us to click I understand. So I'm gonna click on I understand. Okay, so now on the device, what it's showing me right now are my 12 words. You should similarly be seeing on your device a list of 12 words. What we're gonna do now is we're going to stop and we're going to write down our 12 words on both sheets of paper. So we're gonna do it twice and you should do the same thing. So go ahead and pause the video here, write down your 12 words, do it on both pieces of paper. We'll do the same thing. And then when you're done, unpause us and we'll continue together. Okay, so now that we've written down our 12 words, we're gonna swipe down to the bottom I wrote down all 12 words in order and we're we'll have to click and hold to confirm. So I'm gonna do that. And we'll see here a little progress indicator that turns green. So I'll let go. So now it's going to ask me to repeat back the words. And this is interesting, it's different than how they do it on the ledger. On the ledger it says, hey, tell us back the 24 words in order. On the treasure it looks like what it's doing is it's asking me different numbers out of order deliberately. So for example, it, you know, it might say select word number five or number nine or number 11, right? And it's going to hop between all of them until you move through all 12, but it's going to be asking them to you in a random order. And again, the purpose of this confirmation is because since we're never going to have an opportunity to have these words presented to us again, we want to make double sure that we wrote it down correctly. So we're going to repeat them back to the device to confirm, yep, I got the words. They're all in the right order. Go ahead and make the keys and you never have to show me these words again. So go ahead and confirm your 12 words in the order that it asks you. Pause the video here, we'll do the same. And when you're done, unpause and we'll continue forward together. Okay, so another surprise that was a little bit different on the Trezor than it was on the Ledger. It didn't ask us to repeat back all 12 words. It asked just random ones throughout the sequence. And then it told us on the screen that we're good. And here on the Trezor, it says you finished, click continue. So I'm gonna hit continue. Our backup is done. Use the backup when we need to recover the wallet. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue. All right, so we've not yet set the pin is what it's sort of warning us on the device here. But here in the UI, it says we've successfully backed up the device. Okay, so we'll go ahead and continue to the next step. All right, here we go. So now we're gonna do the pin. And it's going to ask us, do you really want to enable pin protection? I don't know why you wouldn't, honestly, because if anybody gets access to your Trezor and they plug it in, they can do all transactions as if it was you, as if they got access to one of your credit cards or your traditional wallet, right? So you definitely want to have a pin on here. So we're going to go ahead and say, yeah, we're going to enable pin protection. All right, so you're going to want to select a new pin. So go ahead and type in your pin. Then it's going to ask you to confirm that pin. All right, it's processing. Okay, and we have successfully set our pin. So we'll go ahead and continue again. Okay, so now we have made our backup from our phrase. We've set up our pin lock. So let's see what's next. We can name the device. A unique name will help us recognize it, and it's super cool. <laughs> so let's go ahead and continue. Let's name it. We'll call this guy Woodland Treasure. 
How about that? We're gonna confirm to continue. Do you really wanna name this thing Woodland Treasure? It sounds a little bit judgy to me, but okay. All right, cool, so we have a wonderful name, Woodland Treasure, thank you. So we'll hit continue again. Yeah, so this is great and awesome advice. So they say, protect yourself against phishing attacks, bookmark this wallet, wallet.treasure.io, to avoid using fake sites. We hear stories all the time about highly sophisticated phishing campaigns where they'll make sites that look identical to the one that you're trying to go to. And sometimes people won't remember what is the exact URL of the site they need to get to, and so maybe they'll Google it, or they'll find it in some other way, or somebody will send them some link and then it turns out that it's not the actual legitimate site they're trying to visit, and it looks exactly the same. So this is great advice. Go ahead and take a second here and bookmark wallet.treasure.io so that you know that that is the exact site you need to go back to every time you wanna work with the wallet interface on your Trezor. So we just added ours, and let's hit continue. If you'd like, you can put in your email to stay updated with their newsletter. We're gonna go ahead and skip this step, and you can follow them on social media. We're gonna just hit continue. Okay, so we're almost done. We made our backup, we set our pin, we named our device, we finished setting everything up. Now what we need to do is add support for the different currencies that we want to use on our wallet to our Trezor and then send our funds over from the exchange. So let's go ahead and finish. It says that we have no transactions yet, which makes sense because we just set this up. It set us up already with an account for Bitcoin. We're gonna need to add accounts for any other currencies we want to work with. And then it's for Bitcoin specifically, we can buy via a card or we can receive by sending it to ourselves from the exchange. So let's go ahead and add Cardano on here as well. When we click here where it says Bitcoin, we'll see uh, some of the currencies that are supported. There's I think over 1600 currencies supported on the Trezor, but we're gonna come down here to Cardano. It's gonna send us to an external wallet. What it means by this is it's going to send us to Adalite. And in the future we can use Daedalus or Uroi or Adalite, whichever we prefer, but for this setup process, it'll set up through Adalite. So let's go ahead and click on go to external wallet, it's gonna load Adalite's website, adalite.io. So we're gonna hit continue. I'm gonna come here to hardware wallet. I'm gonna click on unlock with Trezor. Okay, so it actually opened two tabs here and this is actually kind of confusing. The one underneath here is the one that we need. So we need to install the bridge. The bridge is a communication tool which facilitates the connection between the Trezor device and the internet browser. So we're gonna install the bridge. Here we go. Okay, so uh, I'm on a Mac, so we're gonna download the bridge for the Mac OS. Once it's downloaded, let's go ahead and install that. Go through the full installation process. All right, so that was successful, so let's close it. And now let's try and click here on take me back to the wallet. Okay, so connect and unlock the Trezor. So our Trezor is connected, so let's click on find Trezor. There it is, so we'll click on connect. Okay, so it looks like our bridge installed successfully and we're able to interface with our Trezor through this web portal. So let's go back to Adalite. Okay, so we got an error when we were doing this. Actually, so heads up, if you're using Brave or if you're using an ad blocker, make sure that you turn that off because it looks like that sort of interrupted this process. So we just turned off our ad blocker. Let's try this again. We're gonna click Unlock with Trezor. Okay, here we go. So now, now we're in business here. So. We're going to allow Adalite to read the public keys from the Trezor device. So we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna say always allow. So now we can export the public keys to the device. Okay, here we go. So now we're finally up and running. This is just some news here on Adalite, so I'm gonna close this. But we see we're up and running here on Adalite. So what we need to do now is I can come to receive. I'll get one of the addresses associated with my Trezor and I'll send my funds from the exchange to my Trezor to get my ADA off of the exchange onto here. If you're not familiar with the process or you're not comfortable with removing your funds from the exchange, check out our video on how to take your funds off of the exchange so we can get them onto our hardware wallet. And as we mentioned in that video, make sure that when you're sending the funds over that you do a test transaction first for just the smallest denomination that you'll be able to do. And then when you know that, that goes through successfully and you see your funds reflected here, then send the remainder of your balance. Now this whole setup process through the Trezor suite sent us to Adalite, but you can just as well work with any of the Cardano wallets, Adalite, Daedalus, or Uroi. For example, if I were to open up Daedalus and I go to pair a hardware wallet device, we see that immediately that it recognizes my device and it asks me on the device if I want to export the public key, so I'll hit yes. And then it also will sync up just as well with Daedalus. So now that our Trezor is set up, the last thing we need to do is decide which of the three available Cardano wallets we prefer to manage the actual user interface of the transactions for our Trezor. 
Again, the private keys and everything that's secure about this lives on our Trezor, but we need to now choose between Daedalus, Uroi, and Adalite for actually managing the UI. So before we do any more work, I wanna say congratulations. You set up your Trezor, you have Cardano as an app installed on here, and all you have left to do is choose which of the three Cardano wallet interfaces you want to manage your funds. So check out our next video on choosing the right Cardano wallet for you, and then you can get to delegating. We'll see you in the next video.